Hi everybody, welcome back to Philosophy Media. This video is a response to some of the comments that I received from my last video, uh, showing some of the troubles I was having with the newest release of Debian. And for reference, I'll uh, throw a link down there in the description. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone that left a comment for the feedback. I did make some pretty good mistakes uh, that were pointed out, and I stand corrected, as they were absolutely right. I also should have provided examples as I was going along. I think that would have helped address some of the questions and concerns as it is to, as to what exactly I was looking for and what I was trying to do. So the main concern, as it stuck out it, because it was provided by so many people, uh, was the problems that I was having with Debian. Or uh, the problems I was addressing didn't really have anything to do with Debian and the distribution at all. And I most likely should have directed my frustrations at the desktop environment or the display server. After rewatching the video, I agree it did sound like I was doing a lot of finger pointing at Debian at the time, but I promise that was not my intention, uh, especially the issues with the resolution and the unresponsive buttons. Uh, looking back, the only problem that I was having with Debian were probably just the discrepancies in the repositories that do change do tend to change from time to time or from version to version. And that's just the nature of the beast. And I was just being a big baby about it. So that being said, I have nothing but respect for the developers of Debian. And not only is its reputation as being extremely stable right on the mark, I'd have trouble running a Linux distribution period if it wasn't for the services they provide. A couple of reasons for that. Uh, I guess the first one would be my internet connect connection doesn't really support a rolling release. Uh, for ethical reasons, reasons, I don't really want to go with Ubuntu. And I heard uh, OpenSUSE is having a few problems too, uh, as far as how that regard goes. And when you boil it down, even though it does seem like there are thousands of different options out there, um, you're either pretty much using Debian or Ubuntu. And I also got a lot of people too asking which package I couldn't find the repositories for Vert Manager. And the name of that package is QEMU-KVM, uh, which has been changed to QEMU-System. At least after doing some research, that's the conclusion that I came to. I haven't tried it out yet, but I feel like that's something that should probably be done on hardware anyways. And unfortunately, that's just not an option for me at the moment. But I'll certainly post my results when I do. So to show you the module that I was having trouble finding, or I couldn't find the new repositories, now let's jump over to Terminal. And as you can see, I'm running uh, Debian 10 Buster. And the, uh, the package I was looking here for, ABT search, uh, QEMU dash KVM, hit enter. And there it is right there. But if I try on, uh, uh, with Debian 12, uh, as you can see, we've got Debian 12 right here. I'll say apt, apt search, just the same command, uh, qvmu dash kvm. Uh, you can see all we get is this open stack Tempest thing, which I definitely don't think would be a good replacement. But uh, I guess there is another package though, uh, qvmu dash system that one of the users all suggests in the comments as a just a pretty much just drop and replacement i could pretty much just swap them out and i'd be good to go and maybe let's have a quick look at that here so i'll say apt show qbmu dash system and right down here in the description says qbmu full system emulation binaries qbmu is a fast processor emulator Currently, the package supports ARM, Chris, i3, blah, blah, blah. By using dynamic translation, it achieves reasonable speed while being easy to port on new host CPUs. Uh, this meta package provides the full system emulation binaries for all supported targets. By depending on all, all per architecture system emulation packages, which QEMU supports. So that certainly seems promising. Uh, I can't remember the name of the user right off the top of my head, but uh, thank you for the suggestion. I will certainly try that. I was uh, certainly in a state of panic, panic there. And while we're on the subject of virtualization, I was also getting a lot of questions about the Python virtualization software. 
and that's virtual ENB. Um, this is a uh, Python module that I've used to create virtual environments for quite some time. And I've never really had any problems with it on Debian 10. But I've recently found out that it may be phased or maybe in the process of being uh, deprecated and replaced with VENV, which would explain why it didn't work in the new Debian 12 install. And to show you that right now, maybe I'll uh, just go into my website structory here. And I get some modules. Yeah. I have a couple websites here and maybe I'll show you in the file manager too. All right, here they are right here. So this guy test virtually NV was created in a, a uh, an older release of Debian. And this is the one I couldn't get to work or couldn't activate on this system. And this is the one that I actually created on this system. Um, so when I couldn't get this one to work, I created this one with uh, VENV uh, that's supported on this system. And then after I created this, I just copied over all these files right here into this guy right here. And then just had to reinstall the pip packages um, as per my requirements.txt here. I'm actually going to just show you that quick too. And yeah, here's all the requirements that I had. So maybe just to look at that quick, I got Flask, uh, Jinja, uh, WT forms, requests, stuff like that. So if I close this and go here and I'll say pip3 list, uh, you can see that uh, all these Python packages right here. Oh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, all these Python packages right here come with the actual pip install on the system itself. So these don't belong to the virtual environment. And if I try to activate that environment, so to activate, I just have to go into it here, uh, test virtually MV, and go into bin, and there's activate. So if I just say source, activate, and enter, uh, it looks like it's activated, right? Uh, because it has a name there beside the prompt. But if I do a pip3 list, Uh, as you can see here, we got all the same Python modules that we were just looking at before. Uh, no Flask in here or any of that stuff or WT forms. So even though it's saying it's activated, I'm not sure what's happening here. I'm guessing this maybe could be some kind of issue with the path uh, because the environment was created on a different system with a different username. Uh, I definitely have to look at that a lot more. But uh, yeah, as you can see, it didn't work. And that would be that guy right there, which is the environment that I created on the old, on the uh, old release. Uh, but this one that I mentioned earlier that I created on the new release, if we try to activate that, uh, what am I doing here? Uh, test. And go into bin. And I'll try to activate this. So, oh shoot, sorry, I'm still in the old environment here. I gotta get out of that first. Um, so all you have to do to do that is just say deactivate. And yeah, now we're out of it. So, what I'll do now is just say uh, source. I don't know why I'm so, uh, my mind's kind of everywhere today. Activate. And there we are inside of a test VENV. And this is the one that I created on this machine and copied over my files from the other one. And now if I say pip3 list, uh, you can see here we got all the correct modules for this environment. So Flask, uh, requests, WT forums. Um, everything that should be there is there. And then if I try to run this, 
I'll just run main.py. So Python 3 main.py. And enter. Oh, you can see it fires up without any problems. Uh, and then if I go over to a browser, we'll just double check, make sure it's working. And then go to localhost. Very 5,000. Yeah, it works just fine. Yeah, it seems to be anyways. Let me try to go to a different page. Uh, in case you're wondering, it's just a little side project I got going that I was trying to get working the other day. But yeah, everything seems to be running fine. So I guess the solution to that would uh, just be to uh, to use VENV instead of uh, virtual ENV instead, because I guess that's being depreciated. But which is kind of a bummer because now if that's the case, um, I'm going to have to pretty much rebuild all my other Python environments uh, to suit this uh, VENV. But yeah, still working on that. So maybe I'll just cancel this. But as you can see, we didn't get any errors either. So that's uh, definitely nice to know. And I'll just cancel this. And we all get to this environment. And there we go. So I guess this would just be a, uh, another example of a problem that I was having that wasn't related to Debian whatsoever. Um, it's not even related to a desktop environment, display server, any of that. It was just a Python thing. And it's something that I should have done more research on and found out why. But uh, to be honest, I still don't really know. But I, at least I know now what works. Uh, as to why the thing that used to work doesn't work anymore, I'm not quite sure. But uh, uh, thank you to the user who, post, who posted that comment and the suggestions. As VENV, as you just saw, seems to work out just fine. And uh, another, I guess, suggestion I had in the comments too was maybe just to wait for a couple point releases. Yeah, because when I guess when everything comes out new, it's never perfect right off the bat or right out of the box. So maybe after it's been out in the wild for a bit and uh, people have used it and patches have been made, bugs have been fixed, it will uh, be a much more smoother experience next time I try it. And I haven't lost, lost or sorry, I haven't lost any faith in Debian whatsoever. Um, all these mistakes and problems that I was having, I realized were 99.9% .9 of them were my fault. And uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's about it. So everything still ended up working out okay. And the more time I spend with Debian 12, to be honest with you, the more I'm starting to like it. Um, the only things that do really bug me are just superficial, stupid things uh, like these giant rounded corners. Um, to me, it just kind of seems like a, uh, I don't know, I guess almost like it was made for kids. It just kind of looks silly, but other than that, that's like, uh, that's, uh, just, that's just nothing. So I can definitely get over that. And yeah, I think that about wraps it up. And uh, thank you guys for uh, all the great comments. Uh, even the negative ones um, that I did receive, I found out were pretty fairly accurate and also very helpful. And yeah, I got a lot of those. Yeah, you guys were pissed. But uh, rightfully so. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you on the next one. Bye for now.